Hi, this is Christine Reynolds. Welcome back to my Thomas Kincaid coloring tutorial. This is part two of showing you how I colored the image for this card. If you haven't seen part one yet, you'll want to go and see that. In part one, I show you how I stamped the image and how I got the base color on it to get it to look like this. Today I'm going to go in and show you how I add some of the detail that will bring it to life. To start with, I'm going to start with the grass and um, start to add some of the darker highlights to it. A lot of the, the highlights are already on here. You can see them um, from where you stamped it, and that's what I love about these stamps. I don't really consider myself an artist. I, I don't draw, I don't paint, um, but I enjoy coloring. And the great thing about the Thomas Kincaid images is that the dark spots, the detail is already on there. So you can just come in, especially if you've already put on the light coat of color like I showed you in video one, you can come in and just add the detail where you see the darkness and it just really starts to make the picture pop. Now in the last video I told you that when I was putting on the light color I wasn't really all that careful about where it went. I just kind of came in and, and threw it on there just to get the color on. When I come in and add the dark detail, I do try and be a little more careful about where exactly that color is going because it's darker and it's going to show more. Now if you're thinking, wow, that's a really big difference between the dark and the light, um, don't worry about it because I am going to come back in and blend these together with the mineral spirits later. Oh, and I don't think I told you what color I was using for this. This is PC, oh, I need to get my glasses. I think it's a 1099, it's kelp green. So that's the color I'm using to add some detail. So um, we used the sage green for the base on the green. And now I'm coming in and just kind of highlighting that with the kelp green. And you don't have to be you know, specific about which colors you use. You can use whatever you like. Um, obviously when you're coloring with your pencils. And in here I'm just adding a little darkness underneath where the flowers are. I feel like they would shadow it a little bit and really just to get a little dimension in the, in the bush. So I just want to show you a little bit up close. You can see this is a side that just has sage and I haven't added any detail to it yet and this is a side where I've added a little darker color. So even though I haven't even blended that yet, you can start to really see the difference in the, in the way that extra shading helps make the image pop. So I'm going to continue to do this and um, unfortunately you're just going to have to watch, but I'll play a little music for you and um, I will come back when the next color comes on. Enjoy.
I'm going to use olive green on the tree to add a little bit of contrast there, not just have everything the same green. Okay, so you can see there how it looks when all the greens added. Now I'm going to come in and start adding a little contrast to the flowers. So I'm going to start with the purple flowers, and I had used a, a lighter color to get the base coat on. I'm going to add uh, violet to add a little bit of darkness. And I like to come in and just add the darkness kind of to the bottom part of the flower because I'm assuming the sunlight is coming from the kind of the top and so the flowers would be a little lighter. And you can see again, I'm not super particular about how I get the color on here, that I'm doing any perfect exact flower. I think the great thing about the Thomas Kincaid images is that just getting some color and contrast onto these great detailed images is enough just to make them look beautiful. And again when I come in and blend this a little bit later with my blending stumps and my mineral spirits um, it'll all just blend together beautifully. I think I'm going to leave that tree alone. And I think I'll just add a few purple ones in here. And I can do this just by putting purple kind of at the base of them because when I blend I will pull that color up into it which will um, pull it into the whole flower. Okay, so I think I'm done with my violet there. And I just realized that I pretty much missed a whole area of green. I think I'm going to come in with a spring green for this bush here. Again, just to add a little bit different color in there. And I think I'm going to just come back into this tree with a little spring green, which will help add some contrast with that other color. Alright, there's the green. Now just to show you how that is all going to blend together, I'm going to go ahead and, and blend my grass ahead of time. So um, these are blending stumps. If you haven't um, seen these before, they're available at most of your local craft stores. I think I got these at a, a local craft store, uh, local scrapbooking store, sorry. And um, they are, I use them for blending 
my pencils with my mineral spirits. I have a full set. I just, um, they're already colored on that end and I just use them over and over on that end. You can get just a couple to start off and then let's see if I can find. Sorry, I can't put my fingers on it right now. There is a, oh, I found it. See, I am somewhat organized. You can use um, sandpaper, or I bought this somewhere um, with sandpaper on it, but you can just use regular sandpaper, and you just scrape the color off, and you'll end up with a fresh, clean one if you continue to scrape. Um, you can do that instead of buying a full set if you want. Uh, I use Mineral Spirit, and this is just a little jar that I bought at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago, and it's got Mineral Spirits and a sponge in it, and then that way... I'm able to, let's see where I can put this where you can see it, just dip my stump in there and uh, get it wet. And kind of the con same concept as a lot of other coloring implements, I'll get that a little more wet, you're going to just kind of bring, get the darker wet and just slowly blend it up into your other color. So let me show you, I want you to look at the before, and then I'm going to come in and just blend this and just pull a little bit of that dark into the light, but not all of it because I want to keep the shading. Sorry, I'm not even showing you. thought that was in the video. Sorry about that. But all I'm doing is just pulling a little bit of the dark into the light. And then where I have just lots of dark, I'm just kind of blending it around, getting rid of any pencil line marks that I might have had. And I'll do this other side for you, too, so you can see it. So first I, I roll over the light. It's just how I do it. And then I'm going to just, with small little circles, kind of go into the dark and blend it up into the, the light grass. Just a little bit closer for you so you can see how it's blended together. I'm going to go ahead, since I have my green stump out, I'm just going to go through and kind of blend all these areas. And I've been saying the whole time, I'm, you can tell, I'm not super neat in particular. There are some areas, like in here, where I'll need to be a little neater and more particular, and I'll do those later. Mainly because I'm trying to... Um, show you this on a video and I don't want to bore you with really slow stuff but obviously in those little tiny small areas I would um, want to take my time sharpen my pencil make sure I get into them more neatly and anytime I feel like it's not blending or my stumps drying out I just come in and get it wet again Decided that's probably more of a cloud than a tree, so I'm going to get rid of that before I blend it. Once you blend it with the mineral spirits, you're not going to be able to erase it. So if you've got any mistakes you don't like, erase them ahead of time. Because once you blend with the mineral spirits, you're pretty much stuck with whatever you've done. Okay, so there it is with all the greens blended. 
And then um, just because I've done the purples, I'll go ahead and um, blend the purples for you so you can see that as well. Again, you can see I've got a blue tip on there, I've got kind of a purplish tip on there, and I just use them over and over again. So I'm going to get this wet. Sorry, it's hard for me to tell where the video is when I'm underneath it. Okay, I'm going to come in here and kind of blend this. And I'm being careful not to blend too much of the purple. I want the light to definitely show up. But once you start it gliding around the paper, you can kind of use it to fill in any of the holes that you have. You can see how I did that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Remember I told you that if I started with the dark, I could just pull up into the light, and I'm not sure how well that shows because they're very small, but basically that's what I'm doing with these pieces, is just pulling that dark up so it's lighter at the top. Come in here. One last place to do is this tree behind here, all the purple. And I didn't quite get it in this area. Add a little more color in there. And while I'm doing that, I think I will go ahead and add the sky. And I'm going to use, I think, powder blue. How's that? Yeah, I like the powder blue. I'm going to turn this a little just because it's easier for me. Thomas Kincaid skies are never one color. They've always got beautiful hues of, of other colors going through it. So I'm going to um, take my pink, I think, and run some streaks through there. And the great thing is when I go to blend it with my blender, I will be able to just blend those pinks right in. And they won't look um, like lines, they just look like a little bit of sky color. Okay, let's see how that's coming along. All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, do the red flowers, I think, now. And I'm using crimson red to add the highlights to that. And so I'm just going to come in, just like I've done with all the other flowers, and just add a little dark here and there. And these are a little smaller, so you can see I'm just using little dots to come in and highlight. Just to add a little highlight to the bottom here. So again, when I blend, it'll leave the light color at the top. I'm going to come in into the bottom of my bush and add a little dark. And then do the same thing on each of the layers. Just add a little dark in there. Same thing in here.
And again, I'm going to find my red blender. And I'm going to just get it wet. And then start blending. I'm going to start with this tree because I want to blend it all out and just really show you again how it works. You can really see how it just softens the pencil. The great things about Prismacolors is when you add the mineral spirits then it allows the pencil to flow and move about the paper a little bit. So once I'm happy with that then I'll move on to all my bushes. Alright, well I've just noticed that this video is already over 20 minutes long and um, I don't know about you but that's about my tolerance for a video. So I'm going to end this one here and I will do a part three and I hope you can see how this is coming along and join me for part three next week. See you soon and thanks for stopping by.